Howdy folks, I'm Steve Saylor and I'm running for president. And the one thing I'm most proud of in my campaign is that I'm dealing with reality. Everyone else in this election, believe it or not, thinks we can just carry on with our system that requires endless growth and consumption, competition and war. When the reality is we have to move quickly now into a new system based on conservation, environmental preservation, worldwide collaboration. Come on, you know this in your heart. If we want a healthy, sustainable planet for ourselves and future generations, this is what we have to do. But our rulers, our ownership class continue to manipulate this system of competition to pit us against each other, which actually goes against our true nature because we are social animals, empathetic, compassionate. We, we need family and community relationships and connection. And this is why we see so much sickness in our society now. We're being forced to fight each other and remain divided, which is not how we were meant to be. So isn't it clear what we have to do? To let go of the things that divide us, like nationalism and borders, us against them, when it's really just us. And we have to let go of all these organized religions too, for, for this simple reason. Nothing divides us, separates us like religion. And that's why our rulers have used religion throughout the centuries. It is the best method of control ever invented. If you can get people to believe there's a man in the sky, a, a God who's watching you at all times, who's inside your head, who's gonna send you up in the clouds or down in the volcano when you die, then you can get people to do anything to sacrifice themselves, to go to war for you. Religious wars, ironic, huh? How most all religions profess to strive for peace on earth, and yet one of the biggest reasons we can't have peace is religion. And what is the enemy of religion? Education. Because if people become knowledgeable about the history of organized religions, then it's plain to see they were all made up by people. And all the stories from our current holy books were lifted from the religions that had been around for millennia. We need education, folks. We need all of us to be informed, to be aware of what's going on with our world right now, especially about the damage being done to our ecosystems, the extinction of our wildlife, the bees dying off and all the rest. But I've talked to a few Christians about this and they weren't really that aware of these facts or that interested. It was like, not much we can do. Everything happens according to God's plan. See, you don't have to think for yourself with religion. You don't have to learn because everything you need to know can be found in that ancient book written by people who thought earthquakes and floods happened because God was angry. And, you know, the status quo just loves it. They love it because they need an uninformed, passive, obedient flock so they can continue going about their business as usual. And what's even scarier is that we may be heading toward nuclear religious wars now. But hey, if that's God's plan, and he talks about the end times, we're, we're ready for the apocalypse and the rapture, yeah, when the, when the earth is being destroyed as we are floating up to heaven to be with Jesus. Do you see how dangerous this is? So when it comes to all these religions invented by man, yes, I'm an atheist, but is there a God? Well, that depends on what you mean by God, doesn't it? And that's the problem. Everybody has a different picture in their head of God. Some people interpret the concept in a more spiritual sense as the life force that is everywhere around us that connects us to all living things on this planet, to the universe. And in that case, I'd say, yeah, probably. There must be some higher power or God that's behind the creation of the universe. But I don't know. Nobody does at this point in time. So. Maybe that makes me an agnostic in the I don't know category. But I can believe that this force behind creation can be perceived, can be experienced in the natural world around us, in the land, the ocean, the plants and the trees, nature's God. So maybe that makes me a deist. 
like most of the founding fathers of this country who talked about the God of nature, but did not believe in the gods of the holy books. Thomas Jefferson said, I have examined all the known superstitions of the world, and I do not find in our superstition of Christianity one redeeming feature. They are all alike, founded on fables and mythology. Of course they are. Thomas Paine said, all national institutions of churches, whether Jewish, Christian, or Turkish, appear to me no other than human inventions set up to terrify and enslave mankind and monopolize power and profit. Yes, of course. These were well-read, educated men who understood this system of control. And that's the key, because the more uneducated, the more religious. The more suffering and deprivation people experience, the more religious. And these royal families in the Middle East have kept their people so impoverished and enslaved and controlled by religion, but they'll catch up when, when they have the opportunity to become educated. They too will cast aside their superstitions and realize, as we all must, that we can no longer be divided if we wish to survive as a species. The human organism at war with itself is doomed. Oh, one more thing. Can we stop ending all these political speeches with, and God bless America? Yeah, our God, our country, separated from your God and your country, them and us, doesn't work anymore. No. Maybe we could just add another O to the word, make it good, for goodness sake. So we have to grow up, for goodness sake, and take responsibility for the way we treat Mother Nature and each other. We have to move into a, a collaborative social system if we are going to make peace a reality. And religion is not the answer. It is the obstacle. It will be logic and reason, not superstitions and traditions, that will enable a healthy and sustainable world for us all. So much better for all of us. Thank you for listening and thank you for thinking. And may goodness bless all of us.